What's up guys, this is TCG Sam here, and in today's video, I got a dual replay sent in from a viewer, 100% win rate, with 633 rating, playing against Richard Freitag with 13.07 uh, rating, so it's quite high rated DB. 100% um, win rate has been featured on the channel before as Shadal Fusion playing, of course, Shadals. I believe he's playing the same build or a similar build in this uh, video. So before before we begin, I just want to ask you guys to please remember, if you haven't already, leave a like, comment, subscribe, because it really helps keep me motivated to keep posting more videos like this, and it really helps the channel grow. So I would really appreciate if you could do that for me. But yeah, without any further ado, let's just get straight into it. So um, we lose the die roll, and we are going second. Opening hand is Mathematician, Rishal Wendy, Reshal, Pauly, and Shadal Fusion. So 100% uh, win rate has, uh, we've seen polymerization in his deck before. It's just more ways to get fusion spells, more consistent ways to you access your fusion monsters. Because if you're able to trigger off your Shadal effects by fusing them away, you should just be able to win the game. Op opponent's opening hand is Nadir Servant, Traffic, IDP, Shadal Schism, and Dogmatic Ecclesia. So he's on some kind of... Uh, Dogmatica something build. You can't really tell yet. It could be like Dogmatica Eldritch or, or anything really at this point. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, we don't have any hand traps, so our opponent just has free reign over us right now. Uh, starting off with a uh, normal summoning, the Ecclesia doesn't use its effect. Uh, I su Supposedly to just play around Gamma, I assume, or Droll, because he wants to resolve Servant. It's going to activate Servant sending Apclone after turning the Ecclesia into Artemis. Add Ecclesia, and then effect of uh, Apclone, search Squamata, dump Squamata, Squamata effects, and uh, Hedgehog. Hedgehog effect at regional Wendy. So he's on some kind of Dogmatic Shadal build, it seems. Um, that, was, that was an interesting play on his part. He chose to play around Droll by not using the Ecclesia on the normal summon, which is fair, I guess. Um, and then our opponent's going to summon the uh, Ecclesia. Ecclesia effect is going to add punishment. And then we're just going to set four and pass. So, so we're staring down IDP, Trap Trick, Dogmatic Punishment, Schism. And yeah, and that is a pretty, pretty nasty board. But we do have Shadal Fusion and our opponent can't, doesn't really have a way to stop it. Sure, they can chain, uh, they can make a wind up, but it does not really matter. Just resolving Shadal Fusion, like, it's just so powerful because you get to send... The clown and the squamata to graveyard you gotta chain block your squamata i mean your construct is just absolutely insane so we try to resolve our chain links our opponent's gonna activate shit all schism here uh presumably to make a window which is interesting um to to make oh sorry of course it's to lock us under a trick clown which makes sense i guess but they could have also locked if, I guess it was smart to wait for this because we could just send a different monster off of uh, our Shadow Fusion instead of the Trick Clown. Here locking us into Trick Clown is a little annoying, but uh, our, we, still, we do have two sends, so we're going to send Resh, we're going to send Hedgehog. Hedgehog effect is going to activate, uh, searching us as Shadow Dragon. Uh, I believe he's, he's going to set the Dragon, activate the Resh. That's a pretty pretty cool play. Um, it's also interesting that you get that off of just one construct. So this way you can out uh, any, you can out uh, any like floodgate monsters like Wind on the field, which is really nice. This is something I wouldn't like. I guess he plays, obviously he plays more than one rush. So I guess this is a very very uh, decent play because you're able to out the window without being forced to commit to the battle phase. Uh, our opponent is going to think about his play. He lets he lets the uh, dragon flip up. Dragon returns window. Uh, and then on, and then on res, our opponent doesn't really have anything, so we activate Polly, fusing away the Trick Clown and the uh, Wendy to make a construct. Construct number two is going to trigger, and our opponent just lets everything go. He's not, I mean, like there's not really much he can do right now. IDP, honestly, you can't you can't banish the very constructs until one of them hits the graveyard, and these are the ones you do want to banish to prevent our opponent prevent us from having good grind game. So, uh, Wendy's gonna summon uh, Ariel face down. Ariel, very, very nice. Then he's gonna send Hound. So he does play Hound. This is a very, very cute combo. And I really do like it because every time you make a construct with a, um, with a Wendy, you're pretty much gonna be able to essentially like get a recovery play from your Ariel. Because, the, like, honestly, this is very, very nice play um, uh, from 100% win rate. It's something I, I personally wouldn't have uh, seen. 
This way, Aerial Effects could get him another body on the board, or he gets to set it as a follow up to search a spell or trap. And he's gonna end it. He's gonna end it uh, right under the Artemis, and he's going to put it face up, presumably to link it off later on. And then that's exactly what it does. I believe he's going for the Shadow Construct. Yeah, Shadow Construct Fusion. This card is pretty incredible, and at this point, uh, he st still can't use IDP to get rid of any of the constructs because none of them have hit the grave yet. So, uh, at this point, our opponent's going to punishment. I think he kind of has to, otherwise we just gain too much advantage here. But the good thing is, even if he pops it, we can bring it back and special summon it because of its second effect. Uh, you send any shadow card from your hand or face up field to the graveyard and special summon this card from your graveyard. So that can be pretty, pretty good. He's gonna pop our construct and I, I, let's see what he sends. Uh, he is going to send an app clone to gain some more advantage. App clone effects gonna search aerial uh, and then presumably discard aerial. Aerial effects gonna, yeah, that's the thing. That one punishment forced our opponent to essentially commit quote unquote two cards because one, the punishment, and then they have to specifically search an aerial to get rid of the construct in the graveyard. That just shows how powerful this is. So our opponent's probably gonna banish Shadow Fusion, Shadow Construct, and I guess uh, Trick, trick Line doesn't banish. Shell Construct, be oh, because of IDP. My apologies, it totally slipped my mind that he had it. Because, um, like, at this point, uh, he can just IDP, get rid of those two, gets rid of the extra monster zone one, so our we can't make gravity controller. Uh, and then we just go straight into battle phase. Uh, yeah, I think you, you do have to send a flip monster because you do try to resolve it as much as possible. Sends a dragon, so we're, we're left with one less monster. It's all right. We get to, um, in the in the battle phase, uh, our opponent still has the trap trick, so he's thinking about if he wants to do anything. He doesn't, and we just swing into his Artemis, blow it up, set our uh, rest at all, and just pass it over to him. End phase, he goes trap trick. Trap trick's gonna set him a Paleozoic Dynamiscus. That's gonna trigger his Wendy as well. Interesting, interestingly, he doesn't. I mean, I guess he knew he was drawing Shadow Fusion. Just that talented at the game, I guess. Uh, the thing is, there, um, there's one play that 100% win rate could have done. So when when he was trying to resolve the um, resolve the Shadow Construct, instead of sending the Dragon, he could have sent Rush to the graveyard. And the reason that that's important is um because it plays around a card like shadow fusion what i mean by that is if we're left on this board state and our opponent top deck shadow fusion like they do we can activate rush shadow in the graveyard banishing itself and something else to flip construct face down and then else it, it's not considered some of the extra deck when it's face down so shadow fusion would force him to use the the two monsters from his hand like while yes that's still a construct sending from deck like we all know how powerful that is so that play could have been potentially huge but this setting is also fine because you get advantage um, by summoning back one of your shit alts later on. Your opponent sets sets it and just passes turn. Oh, because he is locked from the extra deck. My apologies. Uh, these things are just slipping my mind. Um, but we go end phase rest shell incarnation. We're going to target Ariel. Ariel is going to be very nice because we're going to be able to grab back construct on our turn. And then on our turn we draw El Shadow Fusion that is a very very nice draw because it allows us to play around cards like Dynamiscus if he tries doing it now um so in the draw phase we actually activate El Shadow Fusion interestingly enough I think I would have waited for our opponent to target something with Dynamiscus let's see what 100% uh, one race trying to do change Dynam yeah that's the problem with doing El Shadow because now our opponent just changed Dynamiscus and like we we have to either use those two for a, um, a Shek, or we have to fuse away the aerial without getting its effects. So I, I don't really like this play, but and I still personally don't see why he did it, but maybe he had his reasons. He does in fact go for a Shek. I uh, was not sure. I was not sure if he played it. Um, act, he's gonna activate uh, when both Wendy's are gonna activate. Uh, the opponent's gonna set uh, Shit All Beast, and our Wendy's gonna set. Uh, let's see, our Wendy's just not gonna set anything i guess he just forgot to resolve wendy um that's very interesting that wendy could have been huge because yeah he did fuse away mathematician and wendy i guess and yeah and he did declare wendy so i guess he just forgot uh, see if that if they notice it later on 
but here uh, when we try to bring back the construct our opponent's gonna chain schism presumably to make uh, a win or app cologne interestingly um because our effect's gonna be chain link one because we're turn player app cologne is gonna resolve as chain link two to negate our construct so it does it does work uh so at this point we're still in a we're still not in like a super great spot we do have a good grind game because we we can add back el Shadal and reshadal so it's very important to remember that i also think we should have summoned check in the extra deck just in case we needed to turn into a gravity controller but it's not really that big of a deal construct effect is gonna add back resh a uh, good thing with resh and cross sheep is you don't have to even fusion summon it to get its effect you can just special summon um a fusion monster to its own and it gets its effect to bring back any level four which can be pretty pretty nice uh, from here, we just set a rush and pass turn. Opponent uh, draws a Dynamiscus, activates a beast, draw two, uh, strike, draw strike dragon. That's pretty nice. Uh, he's just gonna discard the Dynamiscus. I guess he values the dragon in hand for potentially um, a flip effect later on or something. Um, so on res, we're gonna activate Reshell Incarnation, targeting Construct. I think he's. I think he's gonna try to send an aerial to banish those two, but I guess we'll see. Targeting construct, uh, and then activating construct chain link one to chief chain link two. Chief's gonna bring back a Wendy, and then dump hedgehog. Interestingly enough, to search a uh, Skomata to set up our uh, oh to set up our Shekinaga. Yeah, you guys can see I'm quite rusty with like these shell cards. I don't really use them, but Shekinaga's effect it pretty much allows us to negate. Any special summon monsters effect while we have a shell card, and then we trigger our shell skomata later on. So it could be pretty nice. Our opponent's gonna link off uh, Ecclesia and the and the Apollon goes into a cross sheep. Uh, interesting enough, that was our opponent's third Apollon. But anyways, a uh, cross that's gonna trigger Apollon. Apollon's gonna add Ariel and discard it. Um, I. Oh, he adds it from the graveyard. I was, so, I was a little confused, but yeah, he adds it from the graveyard, sends it to the uh, grave. So yeah, it's important to remember Aplon can add from the graveyard, and he's just going to banish those three cards out of our graveyard. Taking away the double rush really does hurt, because it does hurt our grand game quite a bit. And now that our opponent's resolving Shadal Fusion on us, it's kind of bad. Interestingly, he doesn't go for his own construct, uh, but I guess he has he has his own plans. He needed a... S I, I'm not really sure. Um... He's gonna add back Shadal Fusion with the with the Winda, and then he's gonna activate. Um, he has enough spell counters for Selene, pretty sure. Uh, here's gonna activate Shadal Schism. He's going to have to force out the Shekinaga somehow, uh, but I guess he's just trying to play around Shekinaga by not using any of these effects until um, until he can use something like Access Code to to uh, banish something and pop it. I think that was his plan all along. That's why he wasn't using the effects of like Selene or cross sheep so my apologies once again uh, access code is going to get to 5300 and since he can't respond he can just pop shekinaga he can pop uh construct or something and yeah he can pop shack he can pop construct um no targets in the graveyard because they were all banished off our opponent's aerial so that is huge we lost two rest shadals we lost our shadal we lost our shadal construct too so we're in a pretty bad spot here Put a normal dragon swings over Wendy. 5300 is going to swing over our cross sheep. We're going to take 20, uh, 4600, and then we're going to take 2200. So we're down to 200 life points and a dream. Our opponent has a strike and a schism. It's not looking good for us. We need to top deck should all fusion pretty much and should all fusion only. Let's see if we can do it. Super poly actually is pretty nice here. We get rid of the access code, we get rid of the. Um, we get rid of the dragon, but even making a window just doesn't... I don't think it does enough, personally. Uh, like, he, like, he can top deck Super Poly. Like, even if you make a card like Starving Venom, I don't. I still don't think it's really enough, because, especially because our opponent has, like, Shadal Fusion and a Schism still. Our opponent's just still way ahead of us. Um, uh, and he draws his own Super Poly of his own, so... Yeah, I think we still lose anyways because he's able to make a uh, construct construct effect if he chooses. Uh, yeah, he still he still uh, he still he still loses in the end, unfortunately. Um, 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. He still loses anyways, because Construct just goes swing over Winda. There's not much we could do there. That was a pretty nice grind game. Let's see what happens in game two. Alright, game two, opening hand is Mathman, Shadal Beast, Kamada, Aerial Poly. So we got Mathman and a Fusion Spell, plus Kamada, so I assume he plays the Magistus Link 1 too, so this hand is really, really nice. Our opponent has Shadow Game, Super Poly, Punishment, Ash, and Dynamiscus. His hand isn't super great, he's relying on us setting up a bunch of Shadal stuff to use his Super Poly with, otherwise he's just not really doing much. Normal Mathman, Active Effect. Uh, I, I don't really think you, you Ash the Mathman. You wait for whatever he sends, like if he sends a Squamata or a Wendy or a Squam or a Hedgehog, you can just Ash that and like they're they're locked out of that for the rest of the turn. I don't I, like the only thing you wouldn't be able to Ash that I, he could send here would be like a Trick Clown or a Falco. I get, I suppose like he could have been trying to make sure we just didn't resolve that. But if we sent like something like Hedgehog and we just had a bunch of Hedgehogs in hand, then like it'd be dead if you know what I mean. But from here, we're not going to make the Magistus Link 1, so I'm not sure if he plays it or not. But I think I wouldn't have used the Aerial for Apple if he did play the Link 1. So I guess he just doesn't play the Link 1. That's fair. This is probably a very, very nice budget build. We get Squamata, Chain Link 1, Aerial Chain Link 2 to Chain Block uh, with the Squamata, which is a very smart play on his part. Plays around Skullmeister, uh, and you don't really care about Polly in the graveyard. And I guess you can get rid of Ashton, his it might come up, who knows. Uh, we're going to dump Hedgehog off the Squamata. Hedgehog effect is going to search Wendy. And then we have the Apclone to turn into a gravity controller. Activating Apclone's effect at L. And then I think you discard the Wendy here. If Wendy's going to set a Squamata. Yeah, that's a correct play. Because we always want to end with like a Squamata on your turn, even if it's face down, as long as you have a fusion spell, because when you're fusing on your opponent's turn, you get Squamata's effect to send anything you need. So you can send a dragon, you can send an aerial, or you can just send like a beast to draw an extra card. And it's also interesting to note that 100% win rate does not seem to play should all schism. So this is a very, very, very budget build. Um, might be a little similar it's a little different from the one that i'm going to profile if i haven't shown already uh i'm going to do a shadal deck profile without shadal schism my take on it uh interestingly 100 win rate seems to be doing pretty well without it so we'll see how it ends up our opponents had super poly dynamiscus punishment shadow games holding the cosmic in hand off because he knows this is l shadal fusion uh end phase we're going to activate l uh sending away the beast and the squamata to make a window uh I don't know if I would have put it in the link zone, but I guess if you're linking window off, it's whatever. Uh, Beast chaining two. Oh, he does play Schism. I guess. Well, I mean, I guess he didn't technically lie to his opponent, so it, it's whatever. We do have access to Schism though. I did. I was not aware this card spiked up, um, so my budget build did have it. But I will upload another budget build that doesn't have Schism. So, anyways, back to the duel. We're gonna play Shadow Fusion. Uh, Shadow Hedgehog. I mean. Adding Rush Shell Incarnation, and then we're just gonna go straight to battle phase. Uh, we don't want him to, we don't want to commit too much and then just get blown out by a torrential. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with uh, Sinister Shadow games. Interestingly enough, I think 100% win rate also doesn't appear to be playing hand traps, so his build is probably quite nice, uh, quite budget friendly. We're gonna swing into his Hedgehog uh, with our Hedgehog, his Hedgehogs, and Adam and Shell Fusion. And then we are going to direct attack with our gravity controller. I think he just lets that go. Yeah, I think he just lets all of this go. 1500 from the math man and the 2200 from the window. And then going to main phase two, we're going to set rash. We're going to set schism past turn. So our opponent still has like super poly as kind of a way to out the window if he really needs to. And that seems like it's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to super poly away the window and the hedgehog summon his own window. And then that's going to trigger Wind to add back L. And it's still in the end phase. Um, we don't really do anything. Our opponent draws Super Poly again. So that could be potentially huge later on in the game. We're, our opponent's going to turn their Wind into a gravity controller. Uh, effect of no Wind no wind effect. He just needs to get it off the board for Shadal Fusion, I suppose. We're going to chain uh, Rest Shadal Incarnation. Which I think... 
I think is good, yeah, because you gotta bring back- I, I forgot we had an Apclone in Grave. You can bring back Apclone, whatever opponent summons, if he summons his own Apclone or he summons his own Construct, it's gonna be Chainlink 1. Our Apclone's gonna be Chainlink 2, and then we're just gonna be able to negate the whatever uh, they, he summons. He sends a Nib and a Squamata, uh, I guess he just doesn't have any good light targets. I think he should have sent a Ecclesia, because you can bring back Ecclesia off of uh, Cross Sheep, it's very important to remember that. It could have potentially been huge later on. Uh, yeah, he, he is correct. Shadow mirrors are quite hard because your deck is just so grindy. It's so good at grinding. Uh, we're going to resolve the Squamata sending Hedgehog and adding Dragon. And then activating Dino Miscus to banish the Apclone, discarding the Dragon. Dragon's going to target the Schism. Uh, we're going to chain our Schism. And then Schism's going to allow us to summon pretty much any of our fusions that we want. Pierce Wind be summoning a Winda. And then that's going to resolve sending gravity controller. Schism gets banished um, from... Schism should have been banished from the Dynamiscus. I'm not really sure if that... And, oh no, I apologize. That's a uh, dragon. Long day. <laughs> um, he's going to activate punishment next, targeting our gravity controller. Bringing back Dynamiscus, sending his Apclone. And then Apclone is going to add Ariel, discard Ariel. Aerial effect is going to banish Schism, Resh, and Ariel. So... The aerial is just so huge uh, in the mirror match. You get to banish all their spells and traps in the graveyard, and that just cuts off so much of their grind game. And those two traps were especially very, very good for grind games. Our opponent's gonna uh, swing into into our window, and then swing into our gravity controller. Uh, can't be destroyed by battle by something in the main monster zone, so we still have a body for next turn. We draw shit all beast. Uh, this is fine. We still have our construct if we really want to. We're gonna make a construct. Uh, clown summoning back, beast drawing one. Drawing Shadal Fusion, that's actually huge. That is the huge draw, uh, because now I think we just win from this point. Um, sending Resh, making a, making an Apclone uh, using Hedgehog and Wendy. And then uh, Apclone's effect is, is going to be able to negate Construct if he wants to. Um, but I guess it doesn't matter, he's just going to bounce Construct back and that's just going to do it for game two. So very, very close game so far. These are very, very good games. Just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's, it's been like 50 minutes. I feel like I've been talking for a long time too. But yeah, this has been a 50 minute uh, game. So at this point, it probably would have ended in a draw uh, if it was a uh, real life because they would have gone to time. Uh, so going into game three, opening hand as Mathematician, Hedgehog, Super Poly, L, and Trick Clown. Our opponent has a Wendy. Uh, cosmic sinister dogmatic of punishment and a cosmic it's also important to know even if you don't play the um dogmatica engine you can still play dogmatica punishment in your shuttle extra deck just because of the advantage it gives you with apclone and you might be thinking oh you're locked out from the extra deck for the next turn but that's fine because you have the ability to play on your opponent's turn with cards like super poly and l shell fusion and rest shell fusion and shuttle schism if you have it so I think it's it's worth considering. Um, you might see it, in, you may or may not see it in my budget build. Depends if I choose to play it, but I definitely will suggest it uh, in the budget build because it's actually a very very good trap. You tech in a copy of Elder Entity Ents too, so you can get two pops possibly. But anyways, uh, we're gonna start with Shadow Fusion, sending away the Hedgehog and the Trick Clown to be able to summon our construct. Uh, chain blocking our construct and hedgehog. We're gonna search a squamata, dump a dragon. Dragon's just gonna randomly snipe it back, bro. Uh, I think, I think the thing with dragon is I would rather save it in the mirror for when our opponent has a schism face up because just getting rid of their schism just takes away so much of their possible plays on your turn. I think it isn't worth blind shooting it here because you know he plays cards like Sender Shadow Games. You know he plays cards like Dark Magic of Punishment, and these are all chainable cards, so. Um, and I guess in the end, um, we forced out the Sinister Shadow games. It forced them to not be able to send Ariel later on at an opportune time. He's just forced that Ariel off of the Hedgehog. And then we're gonna normal summon Math Man, dump Ariel. Ariel's gonna dump Skomod at all the three all three cards in their graveyard. Probably trying to play around a Falco um, set if our opponent set a Falco, but he has a Wendy set. He gets a set of Beast. We're gonna. We're just not going to attack the beast. I think that's that's a smart play. Because if we just attack the, the beast, he's going to trigger more Shadal effects. He's going to dig deeper into his deck than he should be able to. So we're just going to add back L. Set an L. We choose not to set the Super Poly, which I think I would have set it personally. But 
I guess he wanted to protect it from something like Dogmatic or Punishment maybe popping. Uh, I'm not really sure. But he's going to send Athlone. Athlone's going to add uh, Schism. And then he's, uh, he's going to add back Air. He's going to send Ariel, excuse me. Uh, banishing Trick Clown, Ariel, and Construct from our graveyard. So we lose our Construct, which is which could be possibly huge. End phase Cosmic Cyclone gets rid of our L2. Yeah, that's the other thing too. If you set two, you had a better chance of it not. Um, you had at least one disruption on your poster. Assuming, of course, they didn't have the other cosmic. The fact that they did have the other cosmic, like, I guess it kind of sucked. But if they hit a super poly on, during our end phase and then they cosmic our El Shadal in the standby phase, we still had an El Shadal fusion fusing where um, making a Shekinaga or a window if we really wanted to. Uh, our opponent flips up Beast Draws to draw Servant Dynomiscus. So that Servant Draw uh, was huge. That's gonna that might put us pretty far behind because now he activates uh, servant servant's gonna send another Aplone adding Ecclesia. You can see how powerful um, by the way Aplone is. So like, even if you don't have access to cards like Nadir Servant, you can still send this off of punishment and get Aplones during like every single turn. Aplone is just that powerful. Uh, our opponent is gonna swing into our uh, grafting controller with the beast, do some damage. He doesn't want to kill our Mathman to give us a draw, obviously. Uh, Ecclesia is gonna search another punishment. And then we're just going to set all our back, set all the back row and pass. We top that Cosmic, which is okay. I would definitely not blind Cosmic here. Like, you know he has Schism. You definitely save it for Schism. Uh, in the draw phase, he's going to activate Super Poly th to get rid of, uh, presumably, Construct and uh, Ecclesia and Beast. I would think, yeah, he gets rid of Ecclesia and Beast. Um, this way, if our opponent has a Fleur de Lee in hand, uh, I'm not, I don't remember if uh, we know what this is, but this, this way, uh, it also... It, we also have the priority to activate it in case our opponent um, had some kind of response or something. So we're going to activate Construct effect, effect sending Wendy. Uh, Wendy's going to summon Aerial face down and then now we're in the main phase. Normal summoning Mathematician. Mathematician effect is going to send the Squamata. Squamata's effect is going to allow us to send any Shadal card from our deck to the graveyard. Uh, sends a re sends a rest Shadal finally. Yeah, this Reshidal, I think it was to be expected because he sent Ariel. He he plays the Reshidal very, very well, always setting like monsters. And even though the Construct's getting banished off of Ariel, it just, Ariel in, inadvertently kind of like helped us here because now we're able to set up a second Construct that we might not have been able to get because of, uh, because it's banished now. And if our opponent has no response to the Reshidal incarnation, then they, there's not really much they can do. We're entering battle phase. Uh, I think this is fine. You, you you force out the schism here, so you know where it, where it is. When he activates it, um, I definitely chain cosmic here. Our opponent presume might may might call judgment. Yeah, he judgments. You have to protect your schism because you can't add it back either if it gets cosmic. Um, so he's gonna summon his construct. Construct set uh, schism send construct. Um, both constructs are gonna act. Oh, well, I guess he doesn't want to. Yeah, he doesn't want to add back the Rest at all, which is good. Our, po our opponent's Construct sends a uh, Shadal Fusion. Rest at all, Flip banishes Construct, banishes the other Rest. Uh, flips up Aerial. Aerial effect is going to target Construct. Our, we bring back Construct, activate Construct effect. Construct's going to send our Shadal Fusion. Uh, and from here, our opponent is forced to down Omiscus because they can't allow us to add back our Shadal Fusion. Otherwise, we're just so far ahead at that point uh our opponent discards wendy wendy affects on summon beast uh dragon face down and then on res and then on resolution uh our opponent seems to be thinking i don't, really don't think there's much we can do here I, I don't think he plays any of the big links like access code or something uh if he played a card like selene he could have gone selene access code and uh cleared the board I guess he'd be playing into punishment at I guess he'd be playing into punishment at that point. So just leaving it here is also okay. But we are not in a very good spot because we don't have any of our shit all uh we don't have any of our shit all stuff. Our opponent's gonna punishment target one of our math mans, chaining the super poly to get rid of our um, to get rid of our controller and our aerial um our opponent's gonna send uh, our, their third Aplone off of the punishment to resolve it. Uh, Ariel's gonna banish three guys from his graveyard. 
Uh, I think he definitely should have banished the Shadow Fusion because banishing like the monsters, I guess, takes away the fuel for for Shadow Schism. So he can't make another Aquam, but like the other attributes were just irrelevant at that point because our opponent already used triple Aquam, so I think he definitely should have got rid of the fusion. But I, it's a small thing, I don't think it really matters. Is is there anything we can do? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's game or not. 12, 1200, 1900, and then... 20 this window was super poly so this should should just be game I'm a little confused yeah yeah that was game but that was an incredibly close game uh you will notice that i do want to see 100 win rates deck from what we've seen so far he doesn't just appear to be playing pure budget at all like we had we didn't see any hand traps we didn't see any dogmatic cards so this is actually pretty crazy how competitive like just pure shit alls were like and the crazy thing is, I don't even think he saw like traps like Dinomiscus, Judgment, or like IDP, or Torrential even, or even Shinsu Shadow Games. It's actually just mind blowing to me how how much he was able to grind with a uh, shell deck with just a superior like grind engine because of the Dark Magic cards. So very very impressive for 100% win rate. Uh, this is a very very well played duel. Uh, if you have any more, do send it in. I think people do like the budget should all duels. So. If you guys want more, let me know. I'll get in touch with 100% win rate, ask him for more, um, for more should all duels. But anyways, I know this one was a long one. I did not expect this match to go that long. My throat is dying. Uh, this was a 70, so one hour, 13 minute game. That is crazy. Uh, but I guess it's to be expected because the grind game in the show mirror is just so strong. But yeah, that's gonna do it for me guys. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I tried to be in depth as possible. I apologize if it's a little ranty. If you guys like this type of video, do let me know in the comments below. Um, but with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys soon as I go get some water. <laughs> Take care, guys.